Hello, folks. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy post New Year, whatever. Um, I haven't been feeling like doing any videos lately. Um, like, I couldn't really figure out what I wanted to review. And I got to see, well, not the movies, but online. I saw a little bit, and then I just took them off. I saw Bombshell with Margot Robbie, Nicole Kidman, and Better Woman. I got bored with it, I took it off. Um, then I, I decided to take a look at The Grudge, because I thought, you know, Grant, I don't really care for that franchise, but I like the first one alright, or okay. The second one's, uh, I, I did a review of the second one if you're interested, it's on my channel on BitChute. Um, third one is trash, so this one, which I'm hearing is a, a soft, is like a reboot, but then it's also a, a sequel to the 2004 remake, so <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but anyway, I saw a little bit of the new one, and then I got bored with it, and really because I couldn't, the person that was recording it in the theater, the quality of their camera was kind of blurry and in spots, and then it was too dark to where I couldn't see what was on the screen. So, if there was a jump scare, I couldn't see what happened. <laughs> so, and then I, and then Lynn Shea came on screen, and I don't, I really don't care for her acting. I thought she was over the top in the movie. I know a lot of people probably disagree with that. But, anyway. I was going to review those, and then I decided not to. Because <laughs> I didn't watch them all the way. So, when, when there's a better copy of The Grudge reboot I'll give it a shot again but uh, I decided to take a look again now I own I do like Dragon Ball Z I'm not a huge hardcore fan like a lot of people are in anime I do I love Goku I like Gohan I like Frieza uh, Majin Buu is like my favorite villain though Frieza used to be my favorite villain him and Majin Buu, but mainly Majin Buu right now. But no, I haven't watched any of the new Dragon Ball Super or whatever they're doing now. Or if they're even done with that. Um, I do own the first season of Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I don't really plan on getting more of them right now because I can't really afford them. Um, I do have some Dragon Ball Z action figures, but those aren't really good figures to do stop motion with, so. And right now I'm working on doing uh, Lego stuff right now, so. You'll be seeing some Lego uh, stop motion shorts. When? I don't know. But really because I'm trying to get a base plate so I can put them on the base and then have them move around instead of where I just have them on my desk, and in videos you'll see them t tick a little bit in certain spots where they're not supposed to really be moving, but they're only their arms. So, anyway, you'll see what I mean when I post the videos. But voice acting about that, I don't know exactly. The first stuff I think, I, the first, what, three videos maybe I'll do without voice acting. It'll just be testing again. <laughs> again. This time with Legos more, because I think they'll be able, there'll be more to move around with, I think. I'll be able to do more with them, because to where I don't have to worry about them falling over, unlike the, act, unlike the, the big action figures where you have to, such as Rita Repulsa, I can't get her to stand as long. And then walk, because I want, I had a video where I had her walking, but she kept falling, so I had to keep adjusting it, with sort of jolt in the video. So, anyway, yeah, just a little update of what I'm not doing, what I am doing. But, uh, yeah, Dragon Ball Evolution came out in 2009, and... 
when I saw it, I didn't hate it. I know, probably clicked off by now. <laughs> Hear me out, or don't. Um, no, I, you know, again, I'm not a huge fan of Dragon Ball, or Dragon Ball Z, or Super, but, and, I got, I don't know if you can even make, again, a live action version of Dragon Ball, at all, like, I don't see, I can't see that, I know there's fan films on YouTube, but, again, those are fan films, and, even some of the, Special effects and those I question. <laughs> but people seem to hold that over this movie. Okay. They. And the, the writer, uh, Ben. What's his name? If I can get. The writer. Ben Ramsey, which he he came out and apologized about what he did with the movie. Oh, I'm sorry for going in for just a paycheck and not really caring about what I was writing for or who I was writing for, what franchise I was writing for, and people. I mean, I guess when a, when the writer of the movie apologizes for a movie that he wrote, I guess. You automatically, oh, it's really bad if the writer, but I don't believe that. I think he saw the backlash, I think, how people received it, and he wanted to have it, he wanted to try to cl clear his name a little bit, where I think I'll be able to still get work if I just apologize and move on. They won't see me as the bad guy. I was just, but, you know. But no, I don't hate the movie. I don't th even think it's one of the worst adaptations ever. The the uh, creator of the original Dragon Ball, well, franchise, really, uh, Akira Tomi Anna, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Akira, I guess. Or, yeah. Um, he he even said this is really just a. He doesn't even look at it as a actual Dragon Ball Z movie, just a loosely, just a, a, uh, loosely, I forget what he even, how he, how he perceived it. I think it's on Wikipedia. I'm lo that's what I'm looking at right now, I'm trying to see if. Okay, whatever. Um, he tried to get... He tried ideas for them to do, and they just totally, I guess, kicked him out. <laughs> we don't want any of uh, uh, his input, even though he's the freaking creator. I would have... Oh, here it is. It says, before the film's release, uh, Akira... Yeah, Akira, the creator, intent potentially felt surprised by Dragon Ball Evolution, and suggested to his fans to treat it as an alternate version of his work. I mean, I can sort of... I, that's the only way I can really watch and be okay with it, because, again, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z is where you have just unrealistic... Well, uh, you have too much where people are flying everywhere, and then you have people punched through ro piles of rocks, trees, into the uh, smashed into the ground, Hulk style, and space battles, literally fighting in space, and then you have, now in Battle of the Gods, I think there's like a talking, what kangaroo looks like, as a, you know, he's supposed to be like a, I forget what type, what type of god he's supposed to be. He's some type of cat or purple cat or something, but 
yeah, I don't see how you could really, and then you have the Super Saiyans, and you have Vegeta and, uh, big guy, I forget his name, but the ball guy that was in season with Vegeta, that Goku, Goku made his woman, <laughs> well, well, yeah, and then Vegeta totally just finished him off, but, That's the only way I can really watch this movie and not really hate it. I mean, I don't really hate it at all, but I'm saying, in my view, I don't, I can't see this as a, a actual adaptation of Dragon Ball Z at all. Because the the guy that they play is the Goku in this movie. He goes to school. He's a teenager, going on 18. He likes Chi Chi. Played by Jamie Chong, who's a good actress, and then somehow, and the story's kind of even now. I'm, I used to just not understand. I didn't, again, but after watching like the first season, and watching reviews of this movie, a lot of hate towards it. Um, yeah, they explain the people at the fans. They explain how. Oh, Uzaru's not, uh, he was never a pawn or servant of Piccolo, which is true. I watched a little bit of Dragon Ball on YouTube before I think they took most of those episodes off. And, I think it was, um, I think it was either his dad that I saw him fight. Not Piccolo himself, but Goku fight Piccolo. I don't know if the guy, I think, because wasn't there, there was a demon guy, wasn't the guy before Piccolo named Piccolo, wasn't that his dad? And then Piccolo, or was he reincarnated? I, again, it's been a long time since I've seen um, the original original, so forgive me, or correct me in the comments, but... Anyway, yeah, in the movie, Piccolo apparently has a Zaru, who is a giant ape. Apparently, I, I guess, is Goku when he transforms into the ape during Eclipse, even though in the anime it's a full moon, but okay. And he was, he knew about the Saiyan, well, he knew about Goku, apparently. He didn't know, I guess he doesn't know about the other Saiyans, because he's like, you crash landed, because he explains at the end, he, you, you, you crash landed on Earth as a baby, and you were destined to destroy the Earth or something, and, so, it's like, but then, they do stuff where, like, Goku's favorite, uh, fa uh, famous attack is the Kami, well, com one of them, Kami, Hami, Hami, Kami, Hami, now I'm messing up. Kamehameha. Kamehameha. Attack. And they use it to bring back people from the dead. I'm like, you don't even need the Dragon Balls. Like, why are you even take, why do you even need to find, well, I guess Piccolo, but besides him, what do they really need the Dragon Balls for? Why was Gohan his granddad, keeping a Dragon Ball for him. I forget. And then he wants him to go find the other ones. For what reason. And, because then, like, we're, like, you don't even need him to bring back anybody. Or, like, what, I know it's to make, a, I know it's to make wishes, well, you can only make one wish, but. It's like, if you can bring people back from the dead with just, like, a, a very dangerous attack really supposed to annihilate people or back back you know obliterate people but okay we're gonna use that to uh, bring people back even though at the end when he does that to or no he uh okay so gohan go kick goku is a 17 year old who's about to celebrate his 18th birthday he's training with 
uh, his granddad Gohan and he goes off to school and he meets Chi Chi well, I guess I guess they seen each other around school but never spoke and there's this one scene where he's daydreaming about her where she's eating a cherry in slow motion and this weird backdrop of flowers and blue sky around her and well, she was cute but and then he's talking about the Nam Namic, Namic people Piccolo's uh, species where the teacher looks at him like he's crazy but then I'm like how does he know about again they don't even build the uh, world around this like you don't, so normal people don't know about aliens and I guess in the anime they didn't either but Except for Bulma and Yamcha and the rest of them, but everybody else, I guess, not, but okay. Um, returning home from a party. Oh, yeah, because he goes off to, uh, he goes to a party for, oh, it, before I get to that, there's a scene where he sees Chi-Chi trying to open up her locker. He does, like, a force, <laughs> they really rip off the, they rip off Star Wars in this movie a little bit. Where they use the four, he uses like a, they call it the, the chi, not the, usually like, the, I think it's called the chi or kai. Where he literally does this, he like makes this sign or something, he, and like wind, bru, bush, uh, bursts out of his hand and into the, you seen it in the trailer where all the lockers burst open. And she sees this, she turns around, sees him run away, and then she's like, hey, and did, did you do that or something like that? I think he's like, yeah, I guess, or he doesn't really admit it, I don't think, but then, I guess, again, she knows about the that, she knows about the force, or energy fight stuff in, inside of people, and then, but that's not explained, because she doesn't even do, she doesn't do that, but yet she knows about it, okay. Um, wow, I'm finding a lot of wrong with this move, but, um, Again, you have the character, okay, they go jumping all around the place. I don't mean to, but I'm trying to get everything I have in my head out, so I don't miss anything. But he goes to Chi Chi's party because she invites him there, and he gets to it. Before he leaves to go to the party, uh, there's like the, there is a funny scene to me where he, in the trailer, where he, he has his hair ready. He puts like this gel stuff in it and it, he has like a pick in his mouth and he, his hair just like that and goes all over the mirror. So I thought that was kind of funny. Goes to the party, ditches his uh, granddad for Chi Chi and of course he, pro he has to promise not to fight anybody. So when Chi Chi and when Chi Chi's boyfriend and uh, his jock buddies try to beat up Go Goku. I, I sort of like that scene because he doesn't fight anybody. He just dodges all their moves and makes them break their car and injure themselves. And then he just nonchalant just walks around the party after this with Chi Chi. I'm like, wow, how is nobody, like, uh, I don't know, talking about him? About, or how is he not, like, the life of the party right now? Like, nobody's really paying him any mind after what he just. Grant didn't really touch anybody, but again, he, without touching them, injured, like, the bully, the, what, quarterbacks or whatever they are, jocks, and nobody is like, oh my god, that was awesome, or he, like, did flips, he, he had his head, he was literally on top, he was upside down on the car roof, sliding, I'm like, wow, and nobody's taking cameras, or snaps of whatever, I'm like, okay, and so you have that, and then they're talking, and then you go, you cut to uh, his grandfather, and Piccolo comes to the house. Pretty much, they fight a little bit, lame fight. All he does is, again, Darth Vader choke, and then he decides to let him live for a minute, and then he just out, just stands outside and crushes the entire house. And I'm like, why didn't you do that when before even going in the house? Unless, I mean, I guess because he wanted to find out if the Dragon Balls were there. But, 
Okay. So, and then when Goku feels the, a disturbance in the force, he def he feels something's wrong, and he runs back. He goes back home, finds the house in rub rubbles, and his grandfather dying. He's like, never forget who you are, or something like that, and always have faith of new of who you are, or something like that. And he dies, and then he buries him, which I. I sort of didn't mind the relationship of him and his grandfather, but I think that could have been fleshed out more to where actually care, people would care. I mean, I, I didn't mind. I kind of liked that relationship where he's, you know, I guess that's kind of one so far I like. One thing. Well, I, I, there's another one coming up. But then we get introduced to... Bulma, who, she, at, I guess, the next morning, I assume, because, yeah, but then he dons the, uh, you know, the robe, and then he hears thud of downstairs and up around the house, and he gets in a little fight with Bulma, dispute, really, and she explains how she's from the Capsule Corporation, Who's studying the Dragon Balls? So I guess they know about the Dragon Balls. Does everybody know about the Dragon Balls? Um. Who I get? They, apparently they had a Dragon Ball, but it was stolen by May, uh, uh, Piccolo's right hand lady, and she invent. And then uh, I guess Bulma. Or, I think either Bulma or her dad invented a locator of the Dragon Balls and Goku offers his protection in exchange to help her find Roshi because that's who his granddad wanted him to go seek out so they decide to do that and they go to his house and sort of like in the in the cartoon how he's a perv like uh pervy sage I guess this guy uh Roshi, which, he's a pretty cool, he's funny, really, to me, but, I didn't mind the actor, the girl that plays Ball Mike, uh, Emma, uh, what's her name, Emma, oh, Emmy Rossum, I thought she was alright, I thought her acting was good, not great, but, I didn't think it was bad, like a lot of people claim all the acting is in this movie. Even the guy who played Goku, I thought was okay in spots, and then looking back after watching some reviews, yeah, he some of his dialogue, he says, kind of, it's not the dialogue to me, it's how he delivers the lines. Very monotone. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he, they talk, they they talk about, um, Gohan, and how they have to get the Dragon Balls before the next solar eclipse, when Oz Ozu will return and join forces with Piccolo, and, and then I'm like, you're, you're talking to Azaru, you're talking to him right in, right there, it's Goku, <laughs> okay. And in the midst of the group's search for the six Dragon Balls, or, or the six star Dragon Ball, I'm sorry, they fall into a trap set by the desert bandit Yamcha, who, really in the cartoon, was I liked more a little bit. I like this guy. Even though he reminds me of the guy I played Rufio and uh, uh, Zuko. He looks kind of like him. But, um... This scene was boring because, and a waste of time, because they fall into this stupid pit, this desert pit thing, set trap for, from Yamcha, so he can steal whatever, and then Bulma tries to flirt with him, and he's like, no, and, um, uh, so then they do, that, then they do another exposition scene, and during that, they make a campfire down there. I'm like, you spent all day down here, and then when uh, 
Roshi, all he does is he jumps right up. I'm like, wow, he jumped all the way out of this pit to where he could have did that all day. And then he uh, pretty much gets Goku and Bomb out. I'm like, why didn't you do this earlier? Because, like, like, even Goku, like, earlier, he tried to get out, and then he fell on his butt. But Roshi, out of all the, uh, the three of them, or, yeah, the three of them, they could have just... <laughs> Could have just relied on him to get them out that fast if necessary. But whatever. Uh, then, pretty much promising portions of royalties for Bulma's invention. So he decides to help the group, and uh, they go. They fight off an ambush by May and at a lava place for a Dragon Ball. Where there's a scene, another scene where Piccolo uses like this machine to. That takes his blood or something and creates. I I guess they're uh, I forget what they're called. They were the the, the creatures that Vegeta and um, that the, his other his partner made in the first season. Those little green men. I guess those are what these are supposed to be, but they're kind of. Eh. I don't really care for their. Look. I don't even. I couldn't really tell what they look like because of the CGI. How bad. Not detailed. Like, I don't really care. I'll, I can roll with bad CGI if I like the movie. And this movie, I, I didn't really understand what they look like. Cause, and it's kind of dark. You know, it's supposed to be lit because it's lava. You would assume the whole place is kind of lit up, but okay. But then they take the, the next Dragon Ball. And as a group, they continue their quest. They visit a martial arts tournament where they find Chi Chi fighting. I, I guess it's supposed to be like a secret place. And she fights May to where you find out later why she quit the tournament. Why May was really just in it for whatever. And May uses the match to steal a sample of her blood, of Chi 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 Chi's blood, briefly. She joins with the group as they travel to a temple where Roshi talks with a former teacher and begins to prepare for the enchant for the ritual to reseal Piccolo. But that's what that's where he was all this time, all these years, and pretty much trapped in a bottle, <laughs> genie in a bottle. Well, Chi Chi helps Goku in his training learn the most powerful of the Kai bending tech. What is, and then they use these Kai, but was that even in Dragon Ball Z? I'm not sure. I know, I know people are going to compare to a Avatar because of the bending. They keep, I, I swear, I swear Roshi even says air bending in one of the, in this, in one of these scenes. I swear he says those words. He says, you have to learn all the elements of air bending or bending. I'm like, they like switch out a, a, a little bit from the uh, Avatar. <laughs> they took a page from that. The movie or the show. Um, the Kamehameha, of course, trying to she tries to help him do that, and so they're flirting back and forth doing that during that. And May having disguised herself as Chi Chi, not using her shape shifting abilities. Um, and the blood she stole earlier steals the team's three Dragon Balls, adding them to the ones Pic that Piccolo already acquired, and Chi Chi is knocked unconscious in the fight while Goku, Bulma, and Yamcha and Roshi, Roshi go after her, May and Piccolo, but then, I get, oh, I think in this scene, I believe she shoots Goku to where he freaking dies. I believe, because then he's, because she shoots him up, and, uh, he looks, I thought he was stunned or something to where he's just, uh, you know, in a daze or whatever, but, nope, I guess he's apparently dead, because then he sees his dead grandpa in a foggy place, in a blue foggy background place, and he's, like, saying the same stuff, believe in yourself, and, oh my god. And then, 
this is where we have the scene where Roshi uses the Kamehameha to bring back Goku, where he just literally does the, the, the uh, thing, and he, on his chest, and, uh, and he's alive again, and I'm like, wow, okay. I remember when that, that, uh, that technique was used to, I don't know, kill a lot of villains in the show, like, Cell, in the Cell games, Frieza, I believe, and among others, but, yeah, but that's for re, re, uh, reanimation, too, okay, okay, this is not, no, this is not Naruto, <laughs> we do not do that here, uh, so, the Dragon Balls are successfully united, Piccolo arrives at the Dragon Temple and begins to summon Shenron, and he's stopped by Goku and the, them, and Mei fights a little bit with Bulma, but it's not anything to run home about, even though I would have liked to have seen some of their I wouldn't have minded have seen a scene with them fighting, but Yamcha gets thrown around, I think. And that scene is kind of edited weird. And this is where uh, Goku is already, I think, transformed into the. It's revealed. Oh, he was. He, uh, Izaru the whole time. And again, they messed up the lore where. Oh, it's instead of a moon, it's an eclipse. I'm like, why couldn't it just been the moon? We don't have that much time to shoot here, so we're just going to... Uh, um, so we have a lame thing where he just chokes out Roshi and Arzaru form. It's not even... And it's also it's like pretty much like a werewolf guy. It's like if you... Just take the werewolf and meteor meteor size him and not make him grow really big and buff not even buff but bulky and so he's just a regular dude he just has a little bit of muscle up here and he looks the same to me he just has like an ape face with red eyes i believe and yeah he chokes him out but then it flashes back and forth where it's Goku, and that's the road, uh, Cesaro, that's Goku, and that's Cesaro, and then he re remembers his grandpa, oh, remember who you are, and then he, oh, and then he screams, and he returns back to himself, and he's like, what have I done, and then he goes ham on Piccolo for a minute, and then he does the Kamehameha, and then he kills Piccolo, and I don't even think we see Piccolo land. I can't remember. Either he just flies out and wherever, because it, it makes a big explosion when they when they collide, but and not even in a good, cool scene, fighting ending climax way. But it's like, oh, I did, uh, we did that, and he's, I hit him with that, so he's somewhere, and I summon you, Shenron, and I'm like, uh, dude, he re did anybody tell you that he uh, gave you life by doing that exact technique that you just killed somebody with, like, wow, how does that, wait, how does that work, so you can kill somebody with the Kamehameha, and you can also revive them with that, how does that work, is, does it matter, like, how much energy you're using behind that attack, or that technique, like, they don't explain that, so you literally, you, so you could have did something where you didn't even have to, you waste a wish, and then you, oh, yeah, he mourns for his grandfather throughout this movie. And then, when he has the chance, because I believe, I guess they don't, they don't introduce uh, King Kai or anything like that in this movie to where, oh, you have to get through me to, in order for me to, where they, I guess that, they're basically like a god where they can, re if you haven't seen Gr Dragon Ball, there's a character, I forget his name, but he's like a, he's like god where he can write you where, like you're going to, I guess like a the other world, or I guess they call heaven, and then the other like at the bottom, you know, is demon people and that. That was not in the cartoon. It's kind of kind of odd because they they're not really mean or anything. It's not really scary being down there, but 
But I think if you fall off st snake way, I don't think you can get back up. So that's kind of scary there. But, um, but yeah, they, he mourns for his uh, grandfather to go on. And then when he has the chance to, I, I don't know, again, I don't know if maybe he didn't know it, he can bring people back from that, from the Kamehameha. And he just, he just knows that he can kill people with it, but not use people to bring it back. So, use it to bring people back. But anyway, he wishes for, go, uh, not go on. You know, he can. I'm pretty sure, if you can bring people back w willingly from the Kamehameha, why can't you just wish them back, but okay, as well. But he doesn't do that, he wishes for Roshi to come back, and I'm like, oh, so okay, screw you, Grandpa, even though I mourn for you all this movie, and went, and went in search for this guy for you, but even though I have the chance to bring you back, I'm not going to. I'll just have you be a force ghost and keep appearing to me in dreams and whatever. Like, wow! Just, again, he just wishes for Roshi to come back, and he does, and then they think they're getting the sequel to where they do a Marvel end credit scene where you have Piccolo in a bed and a woman's uh, attending to, to his wounds. He better nothing on him, really. He just turns around and gives her, like, a look of, <laughs> really? And then the movie ends. And we have a scene where Goku and Chi-Chi are in a tournament, and they're about to slow motion kick each other simultaneously in the scene and then it Dragon Ball evolution and then it ends and then I'm like F okay when I again when I first saw the movie I didn't hate it I didn't love it I again I still don't think you can do a, a live action beat for beat uh, Dragon Ball movie I don't the same can be said for a Naruto movie. I don't think you can do a Naruto movie. I love Naruto a, a lot more than Dragon Ball. But I know I will not ask for a live-action uh, Naruto. I won't do it. Because I was about to compare this movie also to The Last Jedi. Because The Last Jedi, to where they did stuff different from the, from the other movies... Such as this movie just being its first movie, even though it's supposed to be a, it's supposed to take the material, the source material for it to be set to go off of, but it doesn't do that exactly because then it ruins some stuff. It changes stuff to where it didn't really need to be changed, and then it ruins stuff to where stuff is already set in stone, but then it's introducing stuff. Of that stuff that's not even really needed to be introduced because then and then that stuff is ruined that you already introduced because you had this stuff that ruins the stuff that you introduced and I am not making sense I know this movie and its logic with the the choices they this guy Ben Ramsey wrote and the movie was directed by James Wong not Wan <laughs> James Wong, and he's only he's directed and wrote uh, episodes of the X Files and Millennium, American Horror Story, and yeah, this movie bombed. It does. I don't want to say it. It deserves it, but again, the stuff I liked. Um, I like the, the relationship a little bit with Goku and his grandfather. I think we should have got more of that at the beginning. Instead of him ditching him. And we should have knew more about Piccolo and not make him a generic, oh, I want I want revenge from the, against the world or Earth, whatever. And we don't know anything about May, his side chick girl, tag along partner. We don't know anything about her. If you watch the anime, then yeah, but if you didn't, then they don't really specify who she is, I don't believe, at all. She doesn't even speak really in this movie. 
I think she says maybe a few, what, two or three lines. She's a silent but deadly killer. I liked her more in the, in the cartoon, or in the anime, I'm sorry. But, uh, uh the girl played Balma I thought was alright. Um, again, I think, I would have liked to have seen really what she was up to most of the movie, because the, the guy I played Goku, again, he's not bad, but at the same time, the stuff that he says, his, uh, deliver, his line der deliveries, eh. I would have liked to have seen the movie, I want to see a spinoff of Balma with the girl, the, uh, Emmy Rodson. I'd rather see a movie with her instead. Just give me a spy movie with her. <laughs> Where she's searching for different, uh, Dragon Balls and she oh, can do that. Getting to be a fan film for Bulma. I think there can. I think there's room for it. But yeah, this movie, again, I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's just a time waster at best. It's not one of the worst movies to me. Or it's, it's not it's not what killed adaptation for anime to me. It didn't do that. Again, this is more of a alternate, alternate, alternate version of Dragon Ball. I want to say more realistic, but very it's low budget. But anyway, if you like the video, if you like the movie, I know what am I saying? If you hate the movie, that's cool. If you despise the movie, that's cool. If you like the movie, I am very shocked. I am very... Mm. I'm not going to roast you for it, because I think everybody has a right to their own likes, dislikes. So. Um, but yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and see ya.